Methane is responsible for roughly about 30% of the warming that's happened since pre-industrial times, so it's the second most important greenhouse gas. Um, and from a standpoint of why it's important, it's because it is a potent greenhouse gas, so it has a higher potential to trap heat in the atmosphere um, than CO2, but also it's short-lived. So in animal agriculture, methane is the most important greenhouse gas, and that's really a couple of different sources, right? So one is the methane that is naturally produced from the rumen microbiome, right? The rumen microbe uh, population in rumen animals. So that would be cattle, sheep, goats of our domesticated farm animals. And the other component of methane emissions is actually um, what we call anaerobic um, decomposition or oxygen-free decomposition of uh, manure that will lead to uh, methane production as well. So both the manure side and the enteric side is why methane is so important for animal agriculture. So if we think about ways that we can try to target reducing methane emissions, we can try to reduce basically the foodstuffs, right, for those methanogens. So some of the ways we try to do that is shift rumen fermentation so we make less uh, hydrogen gas. And so that's one of those key ways to try to reduce methane. And so things like actually feeding more grain or more fermentable carbohydrates to rumens, we know is one of those ways that actually reduces hydrogen gas availability to methanogens in the rumen, and that actually reduces methane emissions. And it's important to note that methane is actually a loss of energy, right? So that hydrogen gas is just basically energy potential in the rumen that's not being captured in usable products, it's being lost to the environment. So any of those things that we can do to capture more energy in the animal, hopefully are win-wins to reduce environmental impact and also improve efficiency of cattle production. So we can kind of lump what Agnax is doing on enteric methane emissions into four different buckets. So the first is just to better baseline where we are. And part of that is collecting what we call empirical data or real measured data and comparing it to models that are out there and making sure we're capturing reality as best we can. And then the other part is thinking about how we reduce methane emissions from cattle. And we can kind of lump that into three different buckets. The first is what do we feed animals and how does that influence methane emissions? So it can be different feed stuffs we're using or feed additives to change rumen fermentation and decrease methane emissions. The other thing we're interested in is understanding the microbes that are there in the rumen. And so um, we can isolate animals that are high or low emitters and then take rumen uh, samples and understand, you know, what are the microbes there? And that helps illuminate to us other possibilities of mitigating methane in the future. And then the last thing is really thinking about the animal itself and its own genetics. And so understanding are there heritable components of methane emissions and can we develop genetic selection tools there in the future where we can basically permanently select for animals in the herd across the United States that just emit less methane naturally. So we wanna have better baselines because we know that's really important for cattle producers across the United States to better represent and understand where they are. And when they know that, they can better work on how do I get better, right? What are the ways I can improve? And our research areas on trying to mitigate methane emissions are really focused on ways to find impactful, scalable, practical ways to reduce methane emissions that we can document in the real world. So our long-term goal really is to reduce methane emissions from beef and dairy cattle in the U.S., but do so in a way that pays attention to all aspects of sustainability. Mm -hmm.